Um, all right, Dave, uh, let's get your thoughts. And Pat, you can jump in as well. I'm, I'm getting hit up left and right about why we didn't do a show last night. And everyone's waiting for your thoughts on, you, on you, the punk thing. Because we were scheduled to do a show with Pat today. I know, I know. That's we, the reason. And so, yeah, I mean, it was, oh, it was one of the great moments in wrestling history. It was fantastic. I, um, <laughs> he... You know, just like the little touches. And I, I think like it was one of those things where number one with that crowd, he was he could do no wrong. So no matter what he did would come up magic because that crowd was so electric, um, you know, so that that was good. But, but I mean, just the little things of him hugging people at ringside. And when he jumped off the ramp into the crowd, like before he even cut the promo, the walk out to the to the ring was just phenomenal. Um, you know, and obviously one of the best crowd reactions you'll ever see. I mean, really up there with. With like the best crowd reactions ever, I think. And, um, you know, the, the promo was, uh, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, you could tell, like he said he was winging it, but at the same time, you know that he's like, he, you know, he may not know exactly what he's going to say, but he's definitely thinking about it and sort of nervous-ish even and um, going through the different uh, lines. And I thought that that, it's funny when he started with the, the line about, you um, the date in August of 2005 when he last le left Ring of Honor. And he was his kind of theme is that he left pro wrestling in 2005 and he, he you know, he didn't like he didn't really get he got the, the dig in on WWE, but it was like he never mentioned WWE by, by name. And he, you know, it wasn't there was no mean spiritedness. And of course, and he, you know, believe me, there could be because there was a lot of bitterness towards the different things that happened and um, saying like, as soon as he said that, I go in and he's going to say August 20th, 2021 uh, mm -hmm. is my day that I returned to pro wrestling and um, which he did. And that was a pretty good line. And I think, I think that there was a weirdness in the crowd because he didn't, when, when he said that he left pro wrestling in 2005, um, some didn't really get the meaning of what he said. And I think others did. And, and it was, um, but just the whole, uh, yeah, I mean, the whole presentation, it was, it was awesome. I mean, it made, um, you know, it was a, it was a real, you know, it was, it was such a home run for, for AEW. I think that that's the whole thing and, and as good a return as it could be. And, um, you know, from here, whatever we're going to see, you know, there's, th you know, and he's obviously not the only return. We're going to see a lot of different people coming up in, including Bray Wyatt. So let me get that out of the way. Um, at some uh -oh, point, that's a, that's a scoop. Yeah. I mean, it's not like this. It's not 100 percent. His non competes not up. But, uh, um, you know, just it's it's, you know, it's most likely happening. It's it's at the same stage when I said Aleister Black long before it happened. Um, it's the same stage. It's like it's it's not like, you know, I don't think there's pen to paper or anything like that, but it's a expectation. that's pretty strong. Put it that way. Um, would you would you bring him back? Would, would you bring him as the uh, Dark Order leader to replace uh, Brody? Is that is that the role uh, they're aiming for him? Um, that I don't know. Um, for, yeah, that I don't I, I don't know exactly exactly, but um you know, I mean, as far as an idea, I mean, that makes sense. It's an idea that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one, that one good would make, that one would make sense. So we were talking a little bit before we recorded about comparing uh, the pop that punk got to historical ones. And Pat first, you know, let, let us know what you, th what you thought about last night. And then you had a really good comparison that, that uh, you, you should also bring up. Yeah, well, I mean, it was just, you know, a perfect moment, such, such a great TV moment. I mean, there's a bunch of people, uh, friends of mine that don't don't necessarily watch uh, AEW who watched uh, Punk last night because it was Punk, right? Uh, and and I mean, it was just uh, so nice w when he jumped into the crowd and that security guy was just trying <laughs> to pull him off from the crowd. It was such a, a, a funny moment and i mean he was he, he was soaking it uh, you know all of his entrance and you know giving hands to to fans it was it was such a perfect moment really 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 liked it and 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 the, the thing that that i really realized is that you know a, a lot of guys have big pops but 
it's nothing compared to what punk got and and nothing compared to it, it made me realize even more that you know the pops that the guys are having today is nothing compared to you know big pops and and you were talking about you know before we got on on hair you know we're talking about and and i'll talk about it the the organ pop in montreal but I, I, I mean, Austin and The Rock, and I mean, back in the 90s, there were so many huge pops, even loud, such louder than, than we have today. And I think that we really, really saw it, the difference of a Jungle Boy pop and a CM Punk uh, pop. And, and they're like both on the same show. And it's not a knock on Jungle Boy, but I mean, that's the kind of pop that we used to have 20, 25 years ago on, on a more, I want to say more regular basis, maybe not... Oh, no, I, I, I would say on a more regular basis. I'll tell you yeah. one that 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 um, that was really gigantic, and um, actually, you know, um, I mean, it's hard because I was live at this one, and this one, you know, the one last night I was watching on television, but the the John Moxley pop on the first AEW show when he came out after the Omega Jericho match was really amazingly big it really was but but that's but but yeah like if i think about like put it this way if i think about going to live shows and seeing um hulk hogan and i mean and, and this would be every night hulk hogan hulk hogan on on coming out um you know after after you know 24 dark you know 24 tv matches and he comes out <laughs> for the dark match main event um you know that that kind of pop um, we really don't get. I, I will say I think that and and Austin and Rock were were probably the closest thing to it. Um, you know um, when I when I think about that that level of pop and yeah you're right except for like the unique special occasion like the Moxley thing and then this even more um, yeah it's it's a lot. Um, edge, yeah, it's, edge. it's more. Edge at Royal Rumble got a huge pop, you know. It, that, that was that was huge, absolutely, yeah, 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 the, huge. What the about? One, the, I'm sorry, guys. The, the, the one with Hulk Hogan in in Montreal was uh, completely different. You know, it was long, and Hogan wasn't expecting it, and you know, he, he really uh, got caught uh, got caught off guard. You know, and 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 it, it's funny because everyone remembers it as the night after WrestleMania 18 on Raw but that wasn't the one the big one from Montreal was on a Smackdown show a Smackdown taping when he was back you know with with red and yellow for the first time in Montreal and I mean it it, 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 it's it 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 was really like for like three or four minutes, which is a long time on TV, yeah. right? And and even Ogan couldn't believe it. And and I remember one of the uh, on one of the Ogan's uh, DVDs uh, from WWE, he talks about it. And I mean, it, it it was just amazing. I was there live, and it was such an unbelievable moment. And and, and Dave, I mean, was was Punk bigger than than George Saint Pierre in Montreal? I, I see, but say see, no. that's, that's see that's that's so hard for me because again I was there live for, yeah. for the first the first George St. Pierre with Matt Sarah, which um I mean that was an amazing night for because it was a culmination of so many things. Matt Sarah was such a we'll actually talk about this show later, but Matt Sarah was such a perfect villain and he understood his role. I mean, look, you're going to Montreal and you're defending your title against George St. Pierre. You know what I mean? It's like he, he knew what he had to do. And I mean, he, he he did it perfectly. And then, you know, it's the first time, you know, George St. Pierre in his hometown going for the world championship, just as like MMA is like really hitting this peak in your market. And, and you know, and also, you know, there were a lot of people from Toronto. It wasn't just the Montreal market. Tons of people came from Toronto for that show. And it was just like one of those, you know, instant sellout match. So that was, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, I, it's, it's hard because again, not being in the building, um, it's hard for me to compare the two. Um, Ric Flair, when he lost to, or the, or Von Eric, when he beat Ric Flair at, at Texas Stadium was a really big pop. I mean, I know Hogan beating Iron Sheik was a really big pop, but, um, and I was at the Flair and Kerry, um, there was uh, the Ric Flair return, if you remember, on Nitro. He was gone for about nine months or so when uh, he had the lawsuit thing and everything, and then he returned. They made the out-of-court settlement, and he he returned, and Arn Anderson built the whole thing up and, and everything. That that one was pretty memorable, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of them, and it's, 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 it's like... 
you know, you know, you could put a decibel meter in the arena and probably get like an actual answer. But it, it's almost like immaterial. It's just the reality is, is this was absolutely 100 percent one of them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and it's one of those moments that I mean, as far as like the wrestling goes that. For the moment, as far as a moment goes, it is a super, super memorable moment that we'll probably all remember. And as far as what, you know, the reality is, is that what does it mean going forward? And, um, you know, I mean, um, the next couple of weeks and months will tell the story. But I do believe, as I've said many times lately, that right now pro wrestling is the most interesting that it has been in, uh, you know, over probably I'm going to go 20 Two twenty three years um, since it was because it's it's you know I mean it's it's not like AEW is beating WWE but but it's not like AEW is not strong competition at WWE either they 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 are not in every city as we saw with Houston but you know like reality wise um, they are absolutely number one in Chicago. I mean, I don't think that you could even argue that they are number one in Chicago, um, New York. It's it's a first time right now. Like, you know, obviously their show is ahead of WWE's, but you need the test of time. And there's other markets where they're clearly dueling evenly. And there's probably going to be some markets where they where they're beside Chicago, where they're going to be number one. And we haven't had that like since since WCW um, collapsed, you know, before the WCW collapsed, we had that and and we have that now. And um, and again, like with all the different things that are going on, I mean, this is this is a super exciting period for the business because, you know, I mean, look, SummerSlam's tonight and um, SummerSlam's going to have, you know, it is the largest gate in U.S. history for a non-WrestleMania show. That's huge. And, um, you know, we had this last night. We've got All Out, which is going to probably do, I, I, I would think it will do the record pay-per-view number for AEW. Um, we'll find out, obviously. And uh, so it's like, you know, it's and, and, and again, AEW is still, you know, there's still people coming in. So we're still not at that peak. We're, we're, getting closer to it now but we're you know and again what that peak is what punk means what danielson means it's it's um you know you know again first week first week is one thing but like where we are at that point it's an unknown uh but you know as far as like the punk situation goes it was as good as it could be i couldn't sit there and go oh i wish she would have paused here or i wish she would have done this i i didn't have that feeling at any point in the promo at, er- at every point it was like this is better than than i expected it was never like oh it's great but i never had that thought once watching that thing do you believe rampage will be dynamite in the ratings this week Yeah, man, there's so much talk about it, but it's, you know, it's Friday at 10. Um, you know, like if, if, if I go by internet and everything, I would say yes, but you know, then there's this, the logical thing of going like, well, how much is it really going to mean? Is he going to mean 200,000 extra viewers? Um, you are actually, it, it, if you compare last week's and last week was an inflated number because they advertised that show so much. And then you got to get to do about 250,000 more viewers. Um, I mean, it's certainly possible, but, you know, if this thing shows up and it does 750, you know, everyone's going, oh, my God, whatever, whatever. Right. And so it's like I, it's it's hard to know. And also it wasn't even though we all knew and and it wasn't like common people didn't know. I mean, there was it was certainly there was a word on the street vibe to a degree. I know people who are not fans who kind of knew, but they kind of knew they didn't really know. Um I do think that Wednesday's dynamite will be really big. Even if this one's huge, fine. Even if it's not huge, that's fine too. But I think the Wednesday show will be really, really big. And I think that the real big one, you know, will be the, the pay-per-view number is going to be the big one. And I really think that that, um, I think that's going to be, you know, again on the high, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to predict high end stuff. Like the low end and usual is, is really easy to predict on pay-per-view, but the big one, and this could be that, you know, the big one, sometimes those things just blow away your expectations. You know, like when, you know, like, like a McGregor fight where, you know, it's going to be big, but you just go, but you know, at 1.2 million, then ends up being 1.8 million or something that like, I could see this there's a chance of that um but you know um you know especially coming off the momentum of last night i think that there were a lot of people who um 
you know, whatever it was that they thought about punk and everything, I think that he came across so good that perhaps it's going to be even bigger than, you know, I mean, uh, bigger than it would have been if he was just came off as what you would have expected, so to speak. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.